My name's Chaz Bruns. I'm just a goofy guy who loves to travel, and just like you, I want to see as much of the world as I can. The only difference is I happen to be a filmmaker, and I bring my camera pretty much everywhere. Which means you're going to get to find out some of the best places in the world to eat, some of the best people in the world to meet, Howdy, partner. and where to go to have a damn good time. And the best part is, I'm going to show you how to do it all dirt cheap. Shut up and sit down. Welcome to Bangkok, Thailand. It's like New York on steroids. And a whole lot weirder. We love China! It's like the Wild West of Asia. You can eat food 24 hours a day, go shopping, do just about anything. Well, except for her. Get your mind out of the gutter. She's just a super friendly bartender. That's all. And we just landed a few hours ago, so we're going to ease into this new utopia we've discovered. And I say we because I'm traveling with Thai restaurant owner Jiro Astana and his business partner Jeremy Abbott. And although they're noodle bowl restaurants located in Bangor, Maine, they still seem to be pretty connected in Thailand. And Jiro's just informed me that we're meeting his friend Borden and going to a Bangkok house party. There's some uh, beer, some liquor, and some live music. Why not? The guy who's singing owns the place, and he throws a pretty good karaoke party. It's a live band, and yeah, it's nice. <laughs> and the cool thing about going to a house party is you actually get to hang out with the locals. And these guys were awesome. I think we rolled in with a $6.12 pack, and they ended up feeding us an entire bottle of Black Label whiskey. My kind of people. And after a few beers to loosen them up, Jeremy hopped on the base. We've got steak over there. They're filling us as many beers as we can handle, and it, yeah, it's good. And as the party slowly winded down, we figured it was time for bed. But lucky for us, Borden had other ideas, which of course was clubbing. What's the best club in Thailand? And clubbing really isn't my scene, but when in Thailand, do as the Thai do. And this particular strip of dance clubs is infamously known as RCA. If you're into clubs, this place is for you. And just like that, I'm drunk. Better head outside. Wait, outside's a dance club too? God damn it. At least Jeremy's out here with me. This is how we ended the night. How American of us. We probably should have listened to the advice that the head of the Tourism Authority of Thailand gave us back at the house party. No, Thailand is very, really, you know, it's a traditional and culture in Thailand. I think it's very good. So you have to, you know, go to the temple, the first thing. You just see the Krai Buddha. You never see Krai Buddha. It's the first thing in Thailand. It's the very, very best. Yep. First thing in the morning, we're going to the temple. Now before we go see Buddha, let me backtrack a little bit and explain how we've been getting around. We rented a private van with a personal driver that seats 11. And we got him for a full 12 hours a day for 60 bucks. And split three ways, it's not so bad. Oh yeah, it comes with free bottled water and your driver doubles as a tour guide. But if you don't want to splurge on your own private tour bus, the next step down is a taxi. And you can pretty much get around most of Bangkok for under 10 bucks. And if that's still not cheap enough, you can always take Bangkok Skytrain. Depending how many stops you go, it averages about 3 bucks. And just a heads up, it can get full pretty quick. And we're staying at a friend's house just outside Bangkok for free. But hotels and hostels are super cheap and we'll showcase a few of those later. And now here's a couple fun facts about Thailand. Their population is 67 million people, roughly 90% of them are Buddhist, and the word Thailand itself means land of the free. So we're about to head out with our private driver, Pai, and uh, Jir's gonna say where he's bringing us today. Uh, he's taking us to a UTI, which is our old capital city that got sacked a few hundred years ago. There's old temples there and a bunch of other attractions. 
In the late 1700s, the Burmese army paddled up this river and they sacked the city of Ayutthaya. And what you see over here, this white section, is the remaining fortification wall of what used to line the city. So this river in Thailand is actually known to have some of the biggest catfish in the world. And I guess uh, here, there's a few of them that are baby sized. They're still pretty big if you ask me, but they'll grow up to the size of like, you know, six, seven feet long and they can suck you right in. So we're heading into the temple, uh, Pa Nan Chun. Yeah, Pa Nan Chun. Pa Nan Chun. And uh, it's supposedly got a really big Buddha. So when you enter a temple in Thailand, they ask that you remove your shoes, and if you're female, to not wear revealing clothing like a skirt or tank tops. I was born on a Tuesday, so I was told my Buddha is the one taking a nap. Sounds good to me. There are statues left and right. People are praying everywhere. But I'm told the big Buddha is in the next room. Let's go check it out. This Buddha was big. And a lot of people come from a lot of places to see him. These gold cloths represent prayers, and they're not allowed to touch the ground. These guys fold them up and throw them up to some other guys who then hang them on the Buddha. And even if you're not that spiritual, it's still a pretty awesome experience. Our next stop, food. And this place is cool. It almost has its own ecosystem. But the best part about it was the food. And we stuffed our faces. I mean, we ordered everything. Fried mushrooms. Good. It's like spicy and sweet at the same time. I have no idea what the rest of this stuff was, but it was good. This one sort of looks like papaya salad. And that one, I don't know. No idea what he just ate. So of course, I ate it too. Oh, the things I'll do for television. But honestly, it was delicious. And you know what? It only cost us about $3 a piece. Now that our bellies are full, it's on to the next temple. And this isn't your average temple. As you might have gathered by the war drums, this was the site of an epic battle. It's kind of strange to think that all these ruins are because of a huge war. So at one point in history, there were bodies, hundreds of them lying here. And you know, what you think of as such a, a serene, peaceful, uh, religious place, it was a, a bloody massacre at one point. It's kind of crazy to think about. But before that battle ever happened, this place was first and foremost a temple. And it was beautiful. And do you remember that sleeping statue they had that represented my Tuesday birthday? They had a huge one here. I bought some incense and said a prayer. Hopefully the sleeping Buddha grants me my wish. And no, I'll never tell what it was. Many Thai people also have a strong belief in ghosts. And being Thai, Jira said he was getting a little spooked out. I personally just think he was ready to go get his afternoon massage. He loves those. So after a long and uh, sweaty day in the heat, walking around looking at the temples, Jeremy's gonna get his first Thai massage. I'm gonna go join him. It's eight bucks for two hours. And this place is owned by friends of Jira's mom, but they're not giving us special prices or anything. This is how much massages cost in Thailand. 150 baht an hour, or about $4 US. That was great. It was so good for Jeremy, he was speechless. That massage was absolutely amazing. I uh, highly recommend it. And now we're going to go relax on a nice boat ride in downtown Bangkok. Uh, we already have reservations at this table, and this is going to be great. 
We met up with Jira's friend Anne and her dad Rashane, and we ate a monster buffet. So for $22, all you can eat buffet, up and down the Chakriot River going through downtown Bangkok, we'll be able to look at all the historic sites. There's um, live entertainment upstairs, I saw some girls dancing up there. I really couldn't ask for more right now, I'm going to stuff my face. So we're up here on the upper deck right now. We're about to go under a massive bridge, which is pretty cool. I hope you can hear me. There's live karaoke occurring. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. This is probably one of my favorite things we've done so far. It's awesome. And even if you don't like looking at the old buildings, you can always watch the dancers. But before you get too excited, you need to remember that when you're in Thailand, it's a 50-50 chance that what you're looking at is a ladyboy. Maybe even more like a 70-30% chance. But don't get me wrong, male or female, they had talent, and the looks to back it up. Could've fooled me. After our dinner cruise, we headed on over to Thailand's infamous Khao San Road. More or less, it's a big party street for backpackers and tourists looking for a good time. But I wasn't quite ready to dance yet, so I got myself some chicken on a stick for 50 cents. Oh yeah, it's uh, 50 cents for four of them. I love these damn things. And there's every type of meat on a stick you could ever want. And even some vegetarian options. Do scorpions count as meat? Uh, I'm gonna have to try one. Chicken teriyaki is what it tastes like to me. I think Jer liked his a little more than I did. But if you're not feeling adventurous enough to eat a scorpion, you can always try some fresh coconut ice cream. So here we are, we're on Khao San Road right now. This is basically Thailand's, or Bangkok's hostel heaven. Um, all these people stay here for cheap and uh, there's bars all throughout this road and it's right in the center of Bangkok. It's great. I just ate a scorpion. Khao San Road is open 24 hours a day. You can drink in the street, get a $4 massage, or just walk around and people watch. But be careful, because you never know what you're gonna come across, or step in. Yum. And hostels can be as cheap as 10 bucks a night, as long as you're willing to put up with the noise. And I don't know if I'd want to stay here for more than one night, but it's worth checking out. And if you can hold down your liquor, it really is a great place to eat. If you get tired of walking, you can always travel around in a tuk-tuk, but be forewarned, they can get pricey, so negotiate first. But honestly, the best way to experience Khao San Road is to walk through it. Smell the smells, see the sights, and watch the girls dance. Oh yeah, these are the two girls from the top of the show. I'm sure you remember them. It's also the same bar where we met the group of backpacking Swedes who really love Thailand. Today seemed like a good day to go to the beach, so we did. About a two hour drive outside downtown Bangkok is a coastal city called Pattaya. The first order of business was getting some grub. So we just got to Pattaya uh, here on the beach. There's shops behind us across the street. We might walk over there and do some shopping. Um, food once again, for like a buck or two, you can get chicken, pork, squid, um, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, we might do some sea doing in a moment, so stay tuned. Sadly, these dudes rented the last two sea dudes, but we didn't let it get to us. We just feasted and drank beer and relaxed in the sun. And it cost us a whopping five bucks a piece. No, no, this right here is like, this is I need the crab. How much? Try it. How much? How much? And after we finished eating, Jira got his usual afternoon massage for six bucks. Two dollar beer, six dollar massage. Feeling good. And I was loving that all of this was only two hours away from the city. And yes, the rumors are true. The beach is full of old single white dudes. But can you really blame them? It's beautiful here. Who wouldn't want to retire in Thailand? One of my favorite things so far about Thailand are all the knockoff things that you can get. Like for example, I just picked up these Ray-Bans. 
in white for 150 baht. That's about four dollars, four dollars and fifty cents. After the beach, we headed to the highest point in the city to check out the view. The beach we were just at is on the other side. This is the big city over here. Way over there, yes, yeah, it's like 30 miles down. Around 5 o'clock, we checked into our hotel, the BB Grand Residence. And they had literally just finished construction, so we were the very first guests to ever stay there. We were greeted by one of the owners, and he was psyched to have us. Five dollars per person. Brand new tiled bathroom, heated shower, our own private balcony overlooking the city, as well as roof access. But screw the amenities, we're here for the walking street. It's similar to Kaosan Road, but with strippers. A for effort, but she didn't lure us over. And there is a lot of competition on this street. Looks like Jira found one he likes. And don't worry, they're literally lined up on the sidewalk to make choosing easy. But if strippers aren't your thing, you can always eat some amazing food, check out a live band, or just get drunk. And honestly, you really don't have to do anything. It's called the walking street for a reason. You can just walk around and look at stuff. I'm not sure if Jira likes him crazy, or Russian, or both. To each their own. You can even play virtual reality games here. This street's got a little something for everybody. That guy seemed like he had a good time. I still can't get over how you can eat a lobster and go clubbing in the same room. Only in Thailand. Oh yeah, there's pretty much 24 hour shopping too. You know, in case you need a wig at 3 a.m. You never know. And our poor driver, Bai, stuck with us all night. I think he was getting a little bored. I figured the best course of action was to buy him a shot of Jameson. I think he liked it. Or at least he pretended to. He was a real trooper. And at this particular establishment, if you won a game of Jenga against the bartender, you'd get a free shot. But if you lost, you had to shake your booty on the stripper pole. I think the game was rigged. Luckily for you guys, there was a 30 second time limit on my dance. I still think I did pretty good though. I mean, look at that. I went inverted. I'm surprised they didn't offer me a job. I got some good moves. And now back to Bangkok. So we're here at uh, the world's largest outdoor market. It's Jatun Jat, I think is how it's pronounced. And you can get anything from food to bags to uh, fake $30,000 watches. Um, you can get anything from lemonade to an alligator skin, uh, jewelry. We're gonna walk around and see what we can find. Of course I immediately got my chicken on a stick, but there was also this awesome potato on a stick. It's more or less just stretched out potato, but it's delicious. And apparently, everybody loves it. Barbecue chips on a stick. Hello. Thank you. That's good. That's really good. That, that, this, is like, this is like Pringles meets fair food. But better, somehow. Somehow better. <laughs> it's like melt in your mouth potato chips. Okay, I might have overreacted a little bit, but they were good. This is insane. We can barely walk in here. We were just told there's over 8,000 stalls. 8,000. It's crazy. But I'm honestly kind of getting sick of looking at stuff. I want to go look at my favorite part of the market. The animals. It's a lot like the pet stores back home, but about 10 times the size. And there's a lot of animals you couldn't get anywhere besides Thailand. For instance, you can get this freaking owl for 2,000 bucks. Or this giant turtle. And the coolest part about the animal market is it's free. Actually, this guy's the coolest part about it. And now, here's a bunch of shots of animals. Believe it or not, this is only a fraction of what they've got here. It definitely beats paying for the zoo. Never really understood having lizards as pets, but whatever floats your boat. I'm more of a dog guy myself, but you could also get a squirrel if that's what you're into. They even sell to-go containers of moss. I don't know why, but they do. Our parrot friend waved us goodbye, and we headed back to the car. 
I think somehow they can sense when you're leaving, because they stepped up their sales game quite a bit. A little bit of magic to entice the customers. And if I would needed headphones, I would have bought them from this guy. Now across town to the Grand Palace. If you're trying to avoid tourists, don't come here. It's insanely crowded. The only other negative was that Jira thought we could all get in for free. Turns out only he could get in for free. If you don't have a Thai passport, you gotta pay 14 bucks. Sorry guys, Thai nationals only. But it was beautiful. I can't imagine how long it took to build something like this. Construction began May 6, 1782. And this is actually where the king used to live until 1925. The royal family has since moved to Dusit Palace, but these buildings are still used for official ceremonies. So much gold. It's mesmerizing. We weren't allowed to film a lot of the stuff inside, so we mostly shot exteriors. But it should give you a good idea of what to expect. If you're into architecture, you're going to want to come check this place out. The paintings were my favorite. People getting eaten by monkey soldiers, women getting raped by pig demons. Some crazy stuff went down in the ancient times. Demons worshipping a green-skinned lizard king? Who has magic powers, can fly in the sky, has a spaceship, wages battles in the heavens, teleports through wormholes to other dimensions? Okay, maybe I'm overthinking this. I've seen too many episodes of Ancient Aliens. I'll leave you with this image of a giant six-handed monkey drowning some poor sap with his tail. Oh, the good old days. And of course no trip to the Grand Palace is complete without messing with the Royal Guards. They secretly want to kill every last one of us. Or at least jackasses like me. I love these friggin' treats. Beautiful. They must be a pain in the ass to maintain, though. I'll take this as a sign that we've worn out our welcome. Just kidding, they do this like every hour on the hour. But we're still gonna leave, just in case. Next up on the list was a little walking tour around Lumpini Park. Similar to Central Park in New York City, it's a protected green space surrounded by concrete and skyscrapers. You could go for a quick jog, a short stroll, or even a romantic boat ride for two. Or if you're alone, you can always do a romantic swan ride for one. And if you've been struggling to find a significant other, you might want to consider the outdoor gym. I'm cool with a brisk walk. Personally, I think Tai Chi's the way to go. This guy's got it down. And now for a quick visual tour of the park so you can decide if it's somewhere you want to go. I went down to the water's edge to try to get a shot of this bird and nearly stepped on the head of a Komodo dragon. Not something you want to get bit by. They carry enough bacteria in their mouths to kill a water buffalo and could probably eat a human baby. Okay, I don't know about the baby part. That was just something a bum in a park bench told me, but I'd steer clear of them. I mostly think they eat birds and turtles. Anyway, enough park life. We're headed to Moon Bar. And no, it's not on the moon, but it's pretty damn close. Nestled on top of the Banyan Tree Hotel, they have a view to die for. Seriously, the barriers are about four feet high, so watch your step. And you can see everything from up here. That park we were just in, right below us. The Moon Bar! <laughs> Sunset, beautiful. Believe it or not, all you gotta do to get a view like this is buy a drink. It even comes with free peanuts and wasabi peas. Not too shabby. It was cold, so I got an Irish coffee. Hello, we're here at the Moon Bar, enjoying some amazing wasabi peanuts and a uh, good drink and good company. It's the coldest day on record in Bangkok. It's warmer in Denver today. <sighs> and they weren't kidding, it was cold. But I'm from Maine, so I decided to make the sacrifice for you guys and stay to film the sunset. And it was worth sticking around. This place gets hopping at night. And as usual, Jer and Jeremy showed up four hours late. Just in time for a cocktail and a few Snapchats to show the friends back home. So 
now a change of pace from the beautiful to more the bloody side of Thai culture. I'm talking hard-hitting Muay Thai fights. And luckily for you, one of my childhood friends happens to be an announcer. This is my high school buddy, Adam Martin, who's doing one of the coolest jobs of anybody I know that was in our class. He is now one of the announcers for NBK Fight Night in Thailand. Well, Muay Thai literally means Thai fighting. And uh, it's part of Thai's history, part of Thailand's history. Muay Baran is the original term. It was uh, used in war. They, when they were having wars, people were actually trained to fight in this way. And so it's got its history, its roots, all through Thailand. So now people are fighting, and that's why it's such an ingrained part of culture. A bit similar to boxing in the United States. It's just sort of part of the culture, and people respect it, and people expect it to happen. Um, a lot of these guys that are fighting, they're not fighting for personal glory. A lot of times they're fighting to support their families. Yep. So that might add to another reason why it's sort of respected out here. Because a lot of these guys, they're, they're not fighting to get famous or to showboat. So they'll come and they'll fight and they'll send all the money back home to their family. Well, this is wildly popular because we're right in central Bangkok. We're at a foreigner shopping mall. This is the most popular mall for foreigners here in Bangkok. And it's free. Yep. And we have good fights. So, you know, for a lot of people, they might not even necessarily know this exists, but they walk by and they stop and they watch and they spread the word that way. So, and you said it's both, it's both uh, girls and guys that will be fighting. Yeah, right? actually the interesting thing about that is that women aren't really allowed to do Muay Thai in the bigger stadiums. So Ratchadam Nern and Lumpini are like the two main stadiums in Bangkok where the top fighters fight. And they don't allow women to fight. Yep. And here at MBK, we actually do allow women to fight. So this is one of the only places where you can actually see women competing in Muay Thai as well as men. Awesome. I hope I see some women knock each other out. That could be kind of fun. Although we didn't get to see any girls knock each other out, we did see some awesome fights. That strange music you're hearing is called Sarama, and they increase the tempo based on the intensity of the fights. And it can get wild. These girls would kick my ass. And probably everybody else's ass there too. This guy's loving it, but I think he might have some skin in the game. Seemed like there was a little bit of money going around, if you know what I mean. But the fights didn't look rigged to me. They were beating the crap out of each other. And even if you're not into watching blood sports, it's still a cool part of Thai culture. I suggest checking it out. After the fights, Jira wanted to take me to dinner in Chinatown. My camera died shortly after this shot, but luckily, Jira had his iPhone. So here's a few clips of me enjoying some Chinese cuisine. Shark fin soup in Chinatown. Bird's nest soup. It's actually really good. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's like a cinnamon bun. Ah, uh, this is Salah. I can't describe it. <laughs> as great as my descriptions of the food were, Jira's phone died right here. So if you want to know more about Chinatown, you're just going to have to go there yourself. Today we're heading to the Ampawa Floating Market. It's about an hour outside the city, so we rented our private van. And we got to get there by 5 a.m. to feed the monks. So we got up really early today um, with the sunrise to come feed the monks. Um, we're at the market and they're kind of setting up. This is where the hustle bustle is going to be. Um, everybody comes here to eat and the monks come right down the river and you give them a special food. They're not allowed to choose uh, what food they eat themselves. And I'm tired, but I got to see another sunrise and uh, I think it's going to be an exciting day. The local vendors sell prepackaged floral arrangements to go along with the food. It appeared the local cats liked them as well. Maybe there's some catnip in there. It's times like this that I'm reminded I really am on the other side of the world. And I couldn't be more grateful. This trip has been amazing. The market picked up quick. If you're a foodie, you're gonna wanna come here. This place is awesome. And cheap, because they serve you right out of their boats. And I love seafood. If it swims in the ocean, they have it. The only negative was it was hot, but it's Thailand, it's hot everywhere. 
And I'm talking temperature hot, not food hot. If you don't want your food spicy, you better let them know because they add some kick. There's also a lot of great desserts if you're in the mood for something sweet. And you can always go shopping, but get there early, because around noon, it gets crowded. Someone just told Jira that there's a guy with a snake that I gotta meet, so we're headed over. And this is a big-ass snake. I honestly had trouble holding it up, which can be a problem, because they told me if you don't support the weight of the snake's head, it can feel like it's falling and might bite you just to regain its balance. And they didn't tell me that till it was around my neck. Luckily, I survived. Oh yeah, it costs about three dollars to take a picture with the snake. If you, do, if you don't know, I'll kill you. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's a nice thing to hear. You need to hold that head or it's gonna kill you. An obviously possible death by snake isn't for everyone, so if you're not into reptiles, head this way. To the tree-covered Wat Bang Kung. That girl you just saw in the van is Jira's friend Joy, and she'll be showing us around today. This temple isn't very far from the floating market, and it's famous because it has a tree growing on it? Around it? I don't really know how to describe it, but they say the only reason it's still standing is because the tree is keeping it from falling down. Oh yeah, it also had a bunch of statues outside of military dudes beating each other up. Makes for some cool photo ops. But we were already hungry again, so we headed back to the floating market. And there's a lot to be said for traveling alone, but it doesn't hurt to be friends with the locals. So branch out, say hi to some people. You never know what might happen. Fried squid eggs. And they're telling me not to do too much spice, but I'm gonna do the whole thing. Mm. It's got a really lip, a lemon base to it. Good. And first off, good, 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 good. the spice is really spicy. So that's kind of kind of flavor. Squid meets um, scallops. It tastes like squid and scallops mixed together. Little, yeah. Squid, squid, squid scallops. It's good. Spicy as hell though. So probably my favorite part about having my uh, my new Thai best friends here is that I don't have to order anything. Joy ran around the market and we've got like, there's so much food here she ran out of places to put some of it. There's chicken, um, looks like oysters, uh, spicy vegetable stuff. I can't even begin to tell you what it is, but it's delicious. I'm gonna stuff my face, and then I think she's gonna bring us to the, um, the floating market. Should be a good time. Five bucks a person. In my opinion, the floating market's even cooler at night. You can go on a river cruise, or even just shake your booty. Don't worry, nobody's gonna judge you. Well, they might judge you, but they're probably mostly gonna be jealous that you're having a better time than they are. I didn't have my dancing shoes on, so I was just people watching. I don't think you'd need to spend more than a day here, but if you have the time, come check out Ampua. It's worth it. I was almost getting ready to call it a night, but then I stumbled across this guy with his chihuahua. And he told me I'd be crazy if I didn't go on the Firefly boat ride. So of course, we went. And it was awesome going down the river, going by all the shops and stuff. But that's only the first two minutes of the ride. After that, you get into some pretty dark, scary areas. So if you're afraid of boats or water, you might want to skip the Firefly tour. It gets a little hairy out there. But there's a reason they call it the Firefly Tour, and there's a reason they go deep into the dark. To film the fireflies. In the dead of the night, from 50 feet away, my camera really couldn't do it justice, but it was neat. There, so I get a little bit of it here. See? I guess it's just something you'll have to experience in person. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for some new scenery. So today, we're heading to the islands. But before we could hit up the beaches, our tour guide told us we had to check out this temple with a tiger cave. It's an ancient temple carved out of the mountainside. And it has all the usual fixings. 
You know, a golden Buddha, statues, etc. But the main attraction is a cave in the back, where supposedly an ancient tiger once lived. And although he doesn't live there now, the locals swear they can hear him at night. I think it might just be this little guy. After we left the tiger cave, almost everything else was under construction, but there were still a few things to check out. We noticed a lot of people were going over to this hiking trail to take a look at the monkeys, so we decided to go there too. And I say hiking trail, but it's more or less a vertical ascent to the top. So if you're out of shape, or the concept of a sweaty jungle hike isn't for you, you might want to skip this part. I made it about halfway. Here's the view. On the way back down, we played with the monkeys. Or maybe I should say they played with us. I couldn't really tell who was in charge here. They seemed to know how to get what they wanted out of us. This dude figured out pretty quick that if he could just coax Jiro over with a friendly low five, he could probably grab his water bottle. And he did. Sneaky little bastard. This little guy seemed to like me, but I think his mom was just trying to get him to sneak into my camera bag. And remember, as cute as they are, these monkeys have some long ass fangs. Not only will they steal your stuff, but they can send you to the ER. And it involves a lot of stitches and a lot of shots. But if you keep your distance, they can be pretty damn cute. After the temple, our tour guide took us to a fish farm. That looks like a just large fish. Looks like a shark. Like a shark fish. And it was free. But honestly, there wasn't a whole lot to see. I don't know if it was because it was overcast or the water was just murky that day, but we barely saw anything. I think that was a sea turtle. It's pretty hard to tell. Okay. Yo, hold on. Look at the waves right there. Yeah. Yo, look at that. Right there. Fun. That was a big, like, it's like a huge tail or something. What are you doing, Jerk? You're trying to attract a crocodile. Nothing ever came. A few miles down the road was this view. Not really a great place to go swimming, but beautiful nonetheless. And it didn't cost us a penny. And while we were there, we got to eat some delicious coconut ice cream. Mm. Comes to like 65 cents, I think. Coconut ice cream. After a quick snack, we headed into town to check into our hotel. The Sleep Whale. And yes, it's a play on words. I thought it was clever. Oh yeah. I forgot I haven't explained how we got here yet. Our driver and tour guide back in Bangkok sold us everything as an inclusive package. We got round trip tickets to fly from Bangkok to Krabi, four nights in a hotel with free breakfast, got picked up for free at the airport, free taxi to the temple and to the fish farm for $200 per person. Oh yeah, we also get a free speedboat tour tomorrow to multiple islands and then a free longboat tour to more islands the day after that. I'm a happy camper. We were checking out downtown and something caught Jira's eye. I was on the fence about it, but he didn't really give me much choice. I chose the red and white one. Only $8 a day. And yes, I know how ridiculous I look. Thanks. Helmet for safety, kids. 300 bucks. How come nobody told me that curb was there? And just when we started shooting all the footage to show why scooters were amazing to rent in Thailand, Jeremy wiped out. But we can't let that stop us, right? The show must go on. Good news was that there were no broken bones and the bike wasn't damaged. Bad news, nobody got it on film. At least he was in good spirits about the whole thing. Um, one thing I highly recommend if you're to rent a scooter, is check the brakes. The rear brake on my scooter was almost non-existent. So when I had to come to kind of a quick stop, nothing. So then I hit the front brake, and next thing you know, you rely on your front brake, you find the ground. At least we were able to find us some first aid, and we were finally at the beach. So we've made it to Ao Nang. This is a new statue, is what Jira says I just installed, and see the islands and the boats behind me too. Um, we parked our scooters here in this tight little parking spot, and we all made it in one piece. Jeremy took a little digger and scraped his knee up a bit, but he'll survive. Um, I'm probably going to buy a bathing suit, uh, maybe some sunglasses, some sunscreen at the shopping over here. Um, hit the beach. Today was a little overcast, but you know, it's still a beach in Thailand. What's not to like? Aonan has a population of about 8,000 people, 
but add in all the tourists, and you're looking at more like 30,000. We decided to go for a walk down the beach to see what we could find. Lots of cafes and cheap places to eat. In case you couldn't tell, this is my kind of place. I love this We got a table with a gorgeous view of the ocean and ordered some food. I like Bangkok, but Aonon's f***ing awesome. My meal, a margarita, and this view cost 8 bucks. I don't think there's anything better than a margarita on the beach. Now we're talking. Yeah, you are. I was still hungry, so I looked to the beach for sustenance. And that's when I spotted my man selling some corn on the cob for 50 cents. Buttered and salted. Mm-hmm. Spent the rest of the day drinking margaritas and then watched this sunset. I'm loving it here. We woke up at the hotel to a free breakfast. It was actually pretty good. Yeah, so uh, we just woke up, had a great breakfast at the hotel. We're going to uh, the speedboat area to go to the islands. And I think we're going to PP Island today. So it should be good. I should probably wear a seatbelt, but there aren't any. At least the ride's free because it's included in what we already paid. In fact, everything's included today. We don't pay for anything. So in case you didn't notice, this is the same beach we were at yesterday. We hop on a boat and it takes us out to check out the islands. So you know how I was just bragging about having everything paid for? Apparently I was wrong. We just found out that Bamboo Island is a Thai national park and has an entrance fee of $11. Which totally sucks, but they make up for it by selling 50 cent beers. We are, we are from Spain, Spain and, and we, we love, love Bamboo Island. Island. Next up was some snorkeling. I'm about to go snorkeling in the Andaman Sea. Life jacket and snorkel equipment are included in the tour, as well as some free rice balls to feed the fishies. And there were a lot of fishies. Hopefully no sharks. I didn't really check before I jumped in. Next up was Monkey Beach. Which as we've already learned, might as well transfer into Thief Beach. So be wary. Want to be my friend? Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> once, once I know you don't have food for them, they're not friendly anymore. We are here on Monkey Island. It's really fun. <laughs> Next up was PP Island. It was a big island with a lot of shopping, but we were just stopping here to eat lunch. And in case you're wondering, it takes about 45 minutes to get from Ao Nang out to the islands, and then once you're here, you spend between 30 minutes to an hour at each beach. And that massive buffet is included in the price. Remember that bird's nest soup I ate in Chinatown that was a delicacy? Well, this is the cave where they harvest it from. It's an ancient Viking hideout, but now it's just the nesting ground for some swallows. So they collect all the nests and they make the soup. Oh, and just be forewarned, it's not the nest that they make the soup out of, it's the bird's saliva. Yum. But hey, I ate it and I thought it tasted good. Give it a try. And now we're going into a cove to do some more snorkeling and swimming. After our swim, we headed over to Maya Beach. It's where they filmed the movie The Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio. Our tour guide told us when they filmed here, the island was empty. Thanks, Leo. But who am I to talk? I'm here filming a movie too. 
And I'm also just another white tourist drinking beer and acting like an a-hole. So we are here in Maya Bay. I was looking for Leo DiCaprio, but unfortunately I didn't find him yet. But uh, hope so, maybe another nice guy. For example, this one behind the camera. <laughs> she was just flirting with me to get to Jira. That little bastard always gets to Eastern European chicks. On the way home, they gave us some free snacks, and we got back just in time to see the sunset. But now that Jira had met Kinga from Poland, we were going out. I can't say no to a margarita. Or two or three of them. But who's counting? Speaking of which, I have no idea what it costs. I think we spent about 12 bucks a piece. Around 11 o'clock, we headed out to Boogie Bar to meet up with Kinga and her friend Kasha. This is the house band and the lead singer, Gun Gun. I think she's awesome. And the coolest part about this bar is the sidewalk cuts it in half. You can walk right through it. So welcome in our favorite bar in Arnhem. So, cheers guys. We even ran into our German friends from the boat cruise here. I like this place. Another day, another cruise. But today, we're going in this boat. Seems like it could handle the open ocean. This is the engine. We're all gonna die. But at least we'll die happy. Our first stop is Tup Island. I'm from Russia. This is my holiday in Thailand. This is a very, very beautiful place. We like Thailand food, uh, very nice water, hot water. The best beach of Thailand. You are welcome. This is Chicken Island. It doesn't look like a chicken to me. It looks more like a monkey. What do I know? Now it's time for more snorkeling. It's a bit crowded today. I don't feel like fighting for equipment. I'm just gonna chill here and hope my hangover goes away. Ugh. It was a fun night though. Next up is Poda Island. We're coming here to eat some food and, of course, lounge around in the sun. Not only is this food included in what we've already paid, but they also had a stand selling $2 beers. And lots and lots of beautiful people. Don't worry, ladies, I got some guys on camera too. Enjoy. Okay, enough sexy time. Let's hear what people have to say about it. Today we're on Poda Island, so there's loads of loads of island trips you can make um, on a boat, and this was only 20 minutes away, and it's got an amazing beach. It's um, pretty cool here. It must be about 35 degrees, because I'm getting sweaty, but you can get a great tan, or be red like him. <laughs> we love Krabby! This next island was my favorite. And no, it wasn't because of the muscly dudes hanging out by the penis caves. Yes, you heard right, penis caves. Apparently it's a shrine to the princess goddess Fra Nang, who gives sailors safe travels in exchange for massive dildos. Whatever floats your boat, pun intended. But personally, I'm here to swim in the cave. 
This is by far my, my favorite swimming hole we've come to. It's the hottest today that I think it's been. It feels like 120, I'd imagine it's like 102. Uh, but I'm in the ocean and can cool off. It's pretty awesome. If you come here, go exploring. You never know what you're gonna find. We stumbled upon a massive cave. It took some effort to climb up there, but it was worth it. It was an amazing spot for photography, and you could also go rock climbing, if you're willing to risk your life for a hobby. No thanks, I'll stick to the beach. When we got back from the islands, we checked into our second hotel at the Presidential. After we checked into our hotel, we got a late night dinner at The Last Fisherman. I got a burger and fries for five bucks. It was a nice night, so we decided to head down to the beach to meet up with Kinga and Kasha and have a few beers, along with our new friend, Samantha. I tried to feed her a hot dog from 7-Eleven, but she was not feeling it. But do you blame her? After the girls left, Jira and I decided to go swimming in the ocean. He swears he saw a shark, but we'll never know. Today, Jira and I just decided to go explore the countryside. I look like an idiot on my scooter, which inspired Jira to get a motorcycle. Damn it, he looks way cooler than me. No wonder he gets all the ladies. Son of a bitch. We pulled into this place called the Nest Beach Club. This was the view from the dining room, but I preferred the view from the pool. Three dollar beer, but to be honest, the rest of the menu was pricey. So we're at the Nest here in Krabi, Thailand, and we are loving it. We love the fact that they have a pool, and we can drink, and walk around. Walk right out to the beach over here and get drinks all day long at the beach. Beautiful weather. You know, if you don't want to be spending too much money, it's way better pricing than in America. So that's definitely a plus. Your dollar goes a long way here and you can definitely get more for your money here. And everything here is just beautiful and amazing. I would definitely recommend it. It's an amazing absolutely. experience. I agree. And then the views here are absolutely stunning. For sure. Can't be laying on the beach all day. Agreed. We're flying out in a couple of hours, so I took one last stroll down the beach. Had one last meal at the last fisherman, and filmed one last sunset montage. Well, I guess this is it. Goodbye, sweet Thailand. Goodbye. It's been fun. Now that you've seen my trip to Thailand, go have your own. Everybody knows me, people 
stop me on the street everywhere I go. Trying to get my autograph, but trying to shake my hand, trying to say hello. Cause I can throw a party almost every single night, play a thousand sold out shows. But I guess I'll just sing sad songs to myself if you won't come around anymore. rise and fall people love me people fear me all across the land but that don't matter to me at all because i can cure world hunger or achieve world peace in a single afternoon but i won't because i can't think of anything else anything but you Oh.